So let's jump right in with feedback-based optimization. This might be considered a bridge between the optimizer and the SQL engine. The SQL engine is going to start automatically giving information back to the optimizer. So what, what's the problem? There are lots of problems, but the two main problems that this addresses is inaccurate cardinality, plenty of reasons for inaccurate cardinality, the number of rows passed out of a step in the plan. If it's right, things are typically pretty good. The next step in the plan is correct, whether the hash join or the estimate join is based on that cardinality. We have to uh, see if this will get us better estimates. The other problem we've addressed here is bind variables. Uh, bind variables, the problem is we don't know the value of two runtime. We've seen bind variable peaking and dynamic sampling around various solutions. We'll see how this solution uh, fits in. Of course, the bind variable value can change at runtime. And even with peaking, bind variable peaking, we haven't solved the problem. So there's feedback-based optimization hopefully gets us a step closer to solving the problem. So the solutions, as I mentioned, weren't perfect, or even near perfect. Find variable peaking, when it hard parsed the query, it peaked at the value, and it optimized the plan based on the value at hard parse time. Pretty good is the values were all the same. They're never all the same in bind variables, that's the point. So when the bind variable value changed, very often there was a need for a re-optimization for a new plan. We didn't have that ability. Now we do. Dynamic sampling, you know, that's a pretty good solution. You can dynamic sample, you can add a hand dynamic sample level four, and I'll demonstrate that to you. It's not that accurate, but it's a pretty good solution. Except you have to add a hand, you've got to do it manually, you've got to alter your session. It's not automatic. So dynamic sampling is not perfect. Certainly hints to force a plan. There is a hint for, 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 for uh, selectivity, which I'll show you. These are not great solutions. We know all the hot problems with hints. We have to change the code. Uh, stored outlines, not necessarily a solution for any of this, but I thought I'd mention stored outlines and SQL profiles. Stored outlines are, by the way, deprecated, and they're very, very rigid in their old technology. So if you're using stored outlines in 11G, you'll see they're starting to push you to migrating to SQL plan management. Take, take a better look at that as well. So plans do change, and we want to avoid bad surprises. So let's turn to 11G feedback-based optimization. So this is sort of the op, the, excuse me, the SQL engine passing information back to CEO at runtime automatically. And you may want to shut it off. It work for you. Let's try to shut it off. What can it return or what doesn't return? Precise cardinalities. So after you run your query one time, it checks cardinality. If the cardinality is way off, it presents the cursor cache with the proper cardinality cardinality and marks the query for re-optimization. <coughs> Execution statistics. Row source profiling is a new feature in 11G. It sort of is an evolutionary feature, but row source profiling counts up the number of rows in each step. And those execution statistics are passed back to the cursor cache. It provides these two new features, one which I mentioned, adaptive cursor sharing, which is a commonly heard feature but also cardinality feedback. Let's take them each in turn. So for cardinality feedback, first let's be very clear about cardinality misestimates and why the cardinality can be wrong. The complex or multiple predicates are hard for the optimizer to come up with the correct cardinality. Extended statistics, which we will take a look at as part of the DMS stats, can help with this greatly. But you have to plan for them. You have to run special procedures when you know there are two columns used together in a where clause. And you have to tell the optimizer through the DMS stats that these two columns are going to be used in a where clause and they are related to each other. So that's not perfect. Functions, we often do lower and upper 
when we do character searches, or, or perhaps a trunk on a date column. So all, all of these functions totally mess up our value estimates. Data skew, we should be using histograms. Uh, but histograms are not perfect. They often become stale fairly quickly. Missing or old stats, that should become becoming more of a thing of the past, certainly with the auto task that runs on a nightly basis. Missing and old stats shouldn't be such a big, big problem. Views, especially ones that are non-pushable and non-mergeable, views that will not accept a filter which you've got coded in a where clause that references the view, where the, where, where the filter cannot be merged in. So it materializes the view and gives you some guess card cardinality and then applies the filter to the materialized view. So these are all significant problems with respect to cardinality. <coughs> And of course, one wrong estimate in your whole plan, if you have a multi-step plan, complex query, can cause the whole rest of the plan to be wrong. <coughs> so let's see if um, this first demonstration, which I've already run, helps. I've got a simple query here. Um, what I'm doing with the query is, is, is just selecting some aggregations from a sales table, and the sales table has got a strange name called the order test cluster. Uh, but what I added to the to the query, uh, the notable things that I've added. Uh, first, may I mention uh, gather plan statistics hint. This is just so I can run a specific form of DBMS exploit and not get an error. So the gather plan statistics is, is not really relevant to this example. It just allows me to extract the explain plan using this query. How many people are using DBMS X plan display cursor commonly? So this thing has gone really far ahead, DBMS X plan. And if you haven't seen the latest formulations of DBMS with the latest parameters for DBMS X plan. It's really worth it to go out to um, it's Charles Hooper's uh, for, uh, blog. So Charles Hooper is one of my trusted resources. I'll name all of these resources at the end. He's got a great page here of all the parameters that you can feed into DBMS X plan. And if, if you haven't seen this lately, when you're doing explain plans, really, really good stuff. Again, I'll, I'll mention this to Charles Hooper again at the end of this presentation, bunch, along with a bunch of other good resources. So I run this query, and the filter has a function which is very common on the date column. And let's see how it did with the cardinality estimate. Here's my explain plan. And it really did a terrible job, absolutely off, off by a factor of 10, more than a factor of 10. So the estimated rows were 150,000. And when it ran, the actual rows were a little less than 14,000. So the, the trunk function uh, caused great problems. 